Hey folks, welcome back. Um, so today will be quite a nerdy video. This is mostly for fellow Geiger counter enthusiasts. Um, might be a bit boring for other people, but um, yeah, join me if you want to. Um, I recently modified my Chinese BR6 uh, cheap 30 box Geiger counter with a Soviet SPT-11A Alpha Beta Gamma capable tube. I really like this tube, I used this in the past in my GQ Geiger counter. Um, it's very sensitive to low level stuff too, this is like more medium, but yeah, it goes pretty fast. We will do a lot of experiments, I'll show you the, 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 the precision, which is a good word, but one topic I want to mention, precision. <laughs> like these, these experiments that I'm doing here in this video specifically, they're really not about precision or accurate numbers. I'm mostly just doing hardware tests and like sensitivity, yes, but not precision. So I just want to have that said uh, before anybody yells at me for being unprofessional. I am an amateur, I am an enthusiast, I, I, I don't have the aspiration for this to be a professional like scientific video. I really just want to fool around, show some fellow enthusiasts some ideas, maybe this helps like uh, some people. Last small thing I want to mention before we get started, uh, just uh, refers to my last video. I told you guys my GMC320 was broken. Apparently it fixed itself, like I'm really happy it's back to its original configuration. I put the M4011 2 back inside. I had like the SPT11A in this one in the past, so that's why it's here now. Um, if you have one of these and you have the problem that it doesn't boot anymore. I, I just it was it got stuck in the boot menu when I turned it on. Just put it into a power supply with the USB and let it boot for a few hours. Mine took like two hours. Suddenly it worked again. So these fixed themselves apparently, which is really cool. Um, very last small detail. Just a quick thank you to Jacqueline, a good friend of mine. I found these at her place recently. Uh, this will be a little bit uh, part of the video too for some uh, experiments. This is more of the of a spicy source. It's uranium glazed kitchen tiles. It's pretty hot actually, it's funny. But yeah, thanks a lot for this. I'm really happy about this. One other small thing I wanted to mention before we get started is um, Geiger Miller tubes are kind of sensitive. Um, especially the glass ones, they tend to break. I broke uh, a fair amount of these in the past few years and Point is, if you want to get some, maybe buy two or three. It can be that one breaks. I got, I bought about five of these, for example, maybe six. One of them came with a broken tube. Maybe it's nobody's fault, they're just sensitive, you know. Be aware of that fact. Okay, I think it's time to do some experiments. <laughs> well, the first thing I want to show you is my modified BR6 with the vintage Soviet SPT-11A tube inside. Compared to the factory model, this is how you get it when you buy it. Uh, it comes with a Chinese J305 um, Geiger Miller tube. Um, I'm idling them already for, for a moment, so you already see um, like the average. There is increased sensitivity in this one, I would say, already now, but we will see that later with some uh, check sources. First of all, I want to show you my modifications, like what I did to get this here. So let's take a look inside. This is an unmodified BR6. The only thing I did here is take out the Geiger Miller tube. This is the ori well, this is the original 305. It came in a shrink wrap. There is a black shrink wrap um, covering the tube originally. If you tamper with it, I would close it again with black tape or something because these are. Um, ultraviolet sensitive and we don't want false values from ultraviolet light, obviously. Maybe detail, um, it's a little bit difficult to extract the tubes. These came, these were soldered on the clips when I bought it. And I even broke one of the tubes while removing the solder here. Just, yeah, you have to desolder it very carefully. Some of this stuff will come in handy, you, yeah, just soldering iron. Another thing that's important, we, we will look at this in more detail later, um, there's a, also an anode resistor. It's this part here. Um, like This is the high voltage supply, it's a Villard, Villard cascade I would say, 
we get a, around 400 volts on the plus minus terminals here. I measured this, which is good. 400 will fit most Geiger Miller tubes. However, different Geiger Miller tubes need different anode resistors. And this one is placed here. It's a 2 mega ohm in this case. I guess the 2 mega ohm just corresponds to this tube here. If you put uh, the SPT11, for example, you will need about 10 mega ohms anode resistance, so we will have to add an extra resistor in here if we install a different tube like this. One very last detail for the, the modification that I did. Um, in general, I, I put the SPT11A tube like on this side in the plastic. I just cut out some of the plastic here. It, it's, got, it's pretty easy, maybe a metal saw or something, kind of saw blade will help. Um, the only thing that was a problem here is this battery terminal here. It was a little bit too big. It kind of like didn't allow me to close it properly again. So basically I just cut out this battery terminal. I just got rid of it completely and soldered on the battery wires directly on the PCB here. Just show you this here on the modified version quick. Open the lid. I think you can see it here. Here the battery terminal is missing. Just soldered in the cables directly. It's another cable than before, but this goes from the battery box. Then I have two other cables from here and here, of course, the plus and the minus. These go to the tube. And I have my on my extra anode resistor. You can't really see it, but it's it's right on the tube. It's just under this tape here at the plus terminal. Only other thing I did, um, the SPT 11 as they have like a, a thread on the back here. You just can put a screw inside. I just basically used this screw. <laughs> this it looks a bit unprofessional, but I think it's pretty okay. I just used zip ties to keep the tube in place and put a little bit of a rubber thing around here. And right now this here really fits together well. You just can put the screws on and you've got a pretty decent device in my opinion. Okay, let's make a quick sensitivity test. Um, let's take a very weak source, pretty difficult actually to measure for a lot of Geiger counters. This is my Equibase bath salt, uh, whatever this here should be. I don't know, I don't use this for bathing. I use it as a test source for uh, K40, um, potassium 40. It, it's some kind of salt that contains relatively a lot of potassium, which will make it radioactive a tiny bit. Like, it's the banana stuff, it's what makes bananas radioactive. Nothing to be worried about, but it's a very interesting test source for experiments. It's already rising pretty high. It's interesting, this is really sensitive to weak emitters like this here. And I'll give it a minute, maybe do a small time lapse. Don't think it will rise much more, but even on the graph down here you already see it pretty well. Okay, this looks really good, didn't take very long. I mean, we've got around 0.5 I would say, it goes up to like 0.7 even, depends a bit. But this is like more than three times background that we can see here. Pretty sensitive, pretty good. So let's see how your factory model will handle the same source. Why did it turn off? Okay. Yeah. I didn't screw them back together so the contacts are maybe a bit bad. Just give it a minute again. Okay, after waiting like five minutes or a little bit more, um, we got a new average here. It's slightly, slightly above the last average, but really not that much. Um, Interestingly, I think this thing still picks up something, even if this is like 10 centimeters or more. I didn't really expect that, but uh, yeah. I want to try now just to get the check sources out of the way. Hope this doesn't restart again. I didn't screw them back together, so that's why they're a bit sensitive. Do that later. So I'll get the check sources away. And I'll give it another five minutes and just uh, want to see if, if it goes down a bit on both.
Well, okay, I waited again for five minutes or more. The average is not really going down on this here. I think it maybe it went down slightly. But just to show you the sensitivity difference, I mean, this one here even picked up stuff from pretty far away, I think. Now it's it calmed down almost completely. Yeah, pretty cool. I like this. <laughs> Another small sensitivity test I want to do is with these very tiny glass beads. It's uranium glass. They're not extremely active, so I think this is a good uh, check source too. I'll just put this here to have it in front of the tube. I will keep about one and a half, two centimeters distance because this tube is also one and a half centimeters above, kind of. So here I just lay it on top. I'll do another time lapse and we'll see if they pick something up here. Okay, after waiting another few minutes, um, I think it's pretty clear here there's something happening. Here not so much. A little bit, but still like, um, yeah. Interesting. Just for fun, I want to have this a bit closer. See what happens. Give it another very short time lapse. Just a minute or so. Okay, after waiting a minute or two, there is something going on here, pretty obviously. And um, maybe another detail I forgot to tell you. These these alpha capable tubes, uh, actually most alpha capable tubes will have like a mica window in front. This is very sensitive uh, material. Never ever touch this, <laughs> otherwise you'll break it. I did I broke one in the past. So on mine I just made this DIY protection mesh thingy. It's pretty easy to make. Um, this here is a stable aluminium housing, you just can bend it around, basically. So yeah, interesting. I have one last um, like difficult check source, we'll take a look at that and then we'll uh, continue. So one last sensitivity test with like a really difficult source. I got this uh, tritium keychain here, it's uh, like a tritium vial inside, it's like the smallest ones you can buy. Tritium is a, is a beta emitter. But we will have uh, some Bremsstrahlung reactions going on here. So when the beta electrons hit the glass vial or the plastic around it, it will have create a Bremsstrahlung effect, which will create some soft X-rays in the process. So I do think we are measuring more X-rays than betas here. Um, I have to say though, this is a really difficult source. Almost none of my Geiger counters can pick it up. Um, my good old GMC 320 barely picks up a very slight increase in count rate with this source here, but it, that's about all. All other Geiger counters I have don't pick up anything. It's really tricky to measure these here. Except the radio code. The radio code actually picks it up, but it you, you see it more on the spectrum than on the count rate, interestingly. Um, I will zoom in on the spectrum here a bit, because back here will be interesting to see what happens. Get rid of the lines here quick. And also I have to restart accumulation. Yes, please. Looks good. So let's place our tritium somewhere here. The, both devices can measure it, more or less. Uh, tricky, huh? Let's have this here. I think this should work. Um, this will need a moment. I will just uh, make another time lapse. I'll give it about five minutes or so. And really have an eye down here. This will be the interesting thing on the spectrum. Also have an eye on the BR6 if this here goes up or not. <laughs> okay, I gave it about five minutes and I I think we see something happening. It's not that obvious yet. If you would measure longer, you see better. But actually really here, the, the very low part of the spectrum, not sure if the calibration is perfect. This should be around 5 um, kilo electron volts. Yeah, zero. Yeah, almost. This peak back here are the, low, the very soft X-rays that we detect from this on the radio code. Which is astonishing, I didn't really expect the radio code to actually be able to detect this. And I think we also see a small increase on, on the, the BR6 with the SPT-11A. So I think this is about 
double background, a little bit less maybe. But it is actually capable of detecting the emissions from the tritium, which is really astonishing. It's, this is a really difficult source to detect, so yeah, pretty cool. So let's take a look at some different Geiger-Miller tubes. For this purpose I have like my third BR6 where I just removed the tube. I have a cable with some alligator clips and we can actually just connect different tubes on this end. Also we'll talk about the anode resistor situation right now, which seems to be uh, pretty important. I will close this here back up just to have the cable hanging out so we can actually see what's going on here. And yeah, I'll get the stuff ready. Actually, just let's just start with uh, putting another SPT11A in the line here. Um, as mentioned before, we will need um, a resistor on the plus terminal of the SPT11A to make it work properly. Um, if you don't add the resistor, it'll just go a bit crazy on the lower count rate. Um, so yeah, this is really a necessary step. Um, in theory, SPT11A needs 10 mega ohm resistor on the anode. This one here is a 5 mega ohm, plus we have the internal 2 mega ohm, gives us 7 mega ohms. It's close enough. It would be better if it's 10, but that's just how it is now. So let's see what happens. I also hope the thing won't shut itself down. Sometimes that happens. The Air Force is paying me a visit too, that's great for the audio. Yeah, tube is connected, I think it's um, doing something, yeah. Um, okay, also a multimeter will come in handy, you will have to have uh, something to measure the resistance in the mega ohm region, obviously. So, um, let's bring in another source. Yeah, pretty obvious, something going on. Let's bring in a hot source, also maybe a small detail about the BR6. One thing I don't like about the BR6, it, it doesn't have a counts per minute option. That's That kind of sucks. So we just have to improvise with these uh, microsievert values, which are not at all correct, but it's just what we have. So this is like a uranium glaze tile, it's like a kitchen tile. Pretty neat, found this recently. It's pretty spicy actually. You will also see the BR6 just per um, factory setting, it will max out at 40 microsieverts, which is not a lot. So it, this could be higher, but again, I, I like to have the BR6 as a detector for um, weak sources, so this is not the ideal source. And we're at 40 now. It won't go higher than 40, so yeah. Let's show you this. Let's play with some different tubes. So this here is an SBM20. These are kind of like the, the Soviet Russian industry standard tubes. These kind of only detect gamma. They will also detect some hard beta, but in general it's mostly a gamma tube. Um, we need 3 mega ohms for this one here to work. This won't work at all if you don't use the resistor, interestingly. I'll show you in a minute. But just to show you here. This does its job, very nice. And I will really connect it directly quick, just bypass the resistors, show you what the BR6 doesn't like it if you do that. But still I want to show you quick. So we bypass the resistors now. Last time it did more weird stuff, interesting. But it actually still works interestingly. Okay, I had issues last time, this is interesting now, but still, like, ideally, just put your resistors in between and you will be fine. I will try to find the, the values for the anode resistors for the most common tubes. Probably I'll show you this now in some kind of a um, picture. Yeah, let's try some other tubes, this is fun. So here we got the Chinese J613 tube. This is mostly gamma sensitive, it probably will pick up some betas too. But it's a very small tube, it's, it's the one that's like in these kind of Geiger counters. Um, it's good if you need something with a small size, but the point is these just have a very low count rate, they're just not that sensitive. Um, yeah, you can see there's almost nothing happening here. It's clicking a little bit once in a while, not very much. Let's bring in the uranium glass.
Yeah, there's a slight increase here. We can bring in a stronger source. Put this here close. This is actually doing something, but it's very strong compared to our other sources. With the weaker sources, this won't do a lot. I want to do a quick test with the... Uh, maybe bath salt or plant ash. I think I'll take the plant ash for this. This is like just plant ash from my stove. Wood, it's burnt wood, basically. Also have a, has a high potassium content. It will have some betos, but honestly, I'm not sure if we will measure anything here. I think this needs another time lapse. I will reset and we'll see how this goes. Basically, I'll just put this on top. And let's give it a minute and see if it does anything. I, I honestly doubt it. Okay, after waiting a minute or two, it's it's detecting something a tiny bit. It's just very low and it's yeah, it's not really a good result. But this is just the size of the tube. It's uh yeah. Not great, not terrible, I guess. <laughs> Well, I thought if we're talking about Chinese tubes, let's just go through all the three Chinese tubes. Uh, no, I have four actually, but uh, we'll see about that. So we have the original tray J305. This comes in the BR6 when you buy it. Um, pretty good tube in my opinion. I think this is kind of a copy of the M4011, which is a great tube. M4011 is also Chinese tube. It's in the GMC320 originally if you buy it. Um, a little bit of stronger source here. Something's happening. The display is a bit slow, but the clicks are immediate. So we have something here. I'm pretty sure these are beta sensitive. We could also just put this on top quick, the plant ash again. Maybe I have to restart the, the count. still too high the number it'll calm down okay after some more waiting time I'm pretty sure we're actually detecting something here like if I take it off again I think this will go down pretty fast like in general I would say these tubes are comparable with the SPM 20 even though SPM 20 is, is not really sensitive to soft beta so, yeah, but this is more comparable than this, for example. It's the size thing. Small tubes will just have a small count rate. That's not really good if you really have want to do sensitive measurements. So, I like both of these tubes. They work, they do their job. There's a third one I want to talk about, which I don't like. We'll have a look at that. Okay, last Chinese Geiger Miller tube we'll talk about is the J321. And here I'm really not sure if I just had bad luck. I got these tubes out of those very badly made, very cheap um, Geiger counters from AliExpress from my last video. These are the plastic Geiger counters. Don't buy these. These are bullshit. It's it's really bad product. And honestly, I think they even scanned me with the tubes. Like these had the J321 inside. I read some good stuff about this tube. It's per se, I think it's not a bad tube. But the ones they gave me here do nothing. I think the gas is missing or something. Or they're fake tubes. I don't know. Point is, I'm very skeptical about the J321 now after buying these. Which they just really do nothing at all. Even with the strong source. So try to avoid this tube in my opinion. Maybe I have bad luck and I just got some bad ones. But like, these suck. These are cool. This one not. <laughs> That's basically the conclusion here. Okay, I think this is the last Geiger Miller tube we're looking at. These are really big Geiger Miller tubes. This is the Soviet Russian SI 22G, mostly gamma tube too. I think they even use these in some Soyuz uh, space mich missions, if I'm uh, not wrong. Really like these tubes. This setup is from my cosmic ray detector. Maybe you you've seen my cosmic ray videos. If you didn't, maybe take a look. Yeah, really neat stuff here. Much more sensitivity, you already see it here on the background. It's just because of the size. There's much more space in here for stuff to go on. It will detect much more background, obviously. And also, like, it's pretty good in gamma. Pretty fast. You can even bring in uh, some more stuff. 
Now it's screaming. Yeah, that is pretty cool. So, yeah, it really depends what, what you want, what your um, purpose is for a Geiger counter. You can really modify a lot of stuff yourself. You can change tubes and stuff. It's pretty easy, actually. Um, yeah, I have one last one. I think I don't, I won't check it. It's also an old Russian tube. I, I'm just, I'm more into the Russian Soviet tubes because they're just more accessible in Europe, I guess. And they were pretty cheap until recently for reasons which, yeah, it's pretty sad. But you still can find them. They went up in price a little bit, but if you search on eBay, you should be able to find these kinds of tubes. Well, let's do a very last test uh, before we head to the intro. Uh, I almost <laughs> forgot about this. Um, I want to do a quick alpha, beta, gamma sensitivity test just to show you how the SPT11A is actually able to pick up alphas, betas and gammas. I'm pretty sure about that. I did this in the past. Um, so I will take three of these tiny uranium glass beads and I'll place them directly on top of the sensor. We have a, an average of 0 0.15 right now. I think we will use these average numbers to, to calculate this. So I will have to restart the average calculation. At background these take pretty long, it takes about four minutes till, till it gets an average. I think if we have a source it should go faster. So more time lapses, time lapses are coming up. <laughs> okay, it still took about four minutes, so uh, yeah, I'll have to wait a bit. So we have a full range number of 1.51 uh, microsieverts, which is not true microsieverts, obviously. But this is good enough for this experiment. I mean, it's the only experiment where we actually, which is actually an experiment where we take notes. Um, okay, so now next step is also like in general, if you do stuff like this, try to do it the other way around. It, it's better if you have the sensor this way, just that you don't contaminate your tube. I feel pretty safe with this uranium glass. Um, I don't think this will have any contamination. It's not dusty at all. They're really small, they're a bit tricky to handle though. Uh -huh. Okay, I think I got them above the detector. So this is just a piece of paper and this paper should block all the alphas. So what we're measuring now is only beta and gamma. We will reset the average, let it make a new average. Um, yeah, another time lapse, I'll come back in four minutes and then we'll see how many alphas are missing basically. Okay, uh, we got our next average, um, minus the alphas we get 1.40. So if we subtract these numbers, I get 0 0.11 total alpha. Um, interesting, this actually makes sense, I guess. Some of you may be skeptical like uh, about um, uranium glass giving off alphas. But the point is, it's not just pure uranium. You, you will have daughter products in here. I'm sure there's some radium going on. Um, then there's also probably, I think there's like Bremsstrahlung effects going on because of the glass too. So this is kind of a, of a mixed bag. Um, <laughs> I'm also using this because I have experience using them in my cloud chamber. I actually saw a lot of betas coming off of these and also some alphas. So that's why I think this is a good check source for this. Um, this here is just a, <laughs> a soda can wall basically. Some people use aluminium foil. I think it's good if it's a bit thicker. This should basically shield everything except gamma. Even some of the gammas will probably get stopped, but I don't think it's a big percentage. Um, yeah, we'll wait for the next average. This stuff is still on the camera, yeah. After that we have all our numbers and we can actually say how much alpha, how much beta, how much gamma. Okay, I'll make a quick intervention here. It's not going as planned. Maybe you noticed, we're, we're going quite high here. I had this experience in the past. And I do believe it's also, I just blame everything on Bremsstrahlung, which is probably not correct, but I do believe it's some effect that the gammas maybe knock out some electrons in the aluminium or something. 
So I want to try it again with the paper underneath, just to shield more soft radiation. Because I really, yeah, maybe it helps, maybe it doesn't, I don't know. Maybe it's better if you want a pure gamma to use both filters, like the alpha and the beta filter, so paper and aluminium. I'll do this again, we'll come back in five minutes and then we'll actually get some results, I hope. Okay, I think we're done. This seems to make sense so far. Um, we got 1.29 average now. This is a minus alpha and beta. So with some very simple mathematics, I hope I didn't mess this up. I, I, I'm not good at mathematics. But these are my calculations. So we got a total alpha of 0 0.11, a total beta of 0 0.11 and a total gamma of 1.29. This really makes sense for, for this source. I mean, there is mostly gamma coming off the uranium glass, but there will be some other stuff too. Okay, let's go to the intro. Uh, the outro, I mean. <laughs> Finish this. Okay, I think that's about it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Um, some last things before I end. I made this little graphic about anode resistors, just about the tubes that we tested today. But I encourage you to, to Google your own Geiger Miller tube. Just Google anode resistor and your specific tube model. You should find information there. One small thing too to be aware of, I, I talked about this before. Most Geiger counters will have a built-in anode resistor. That's just specifically for the tube that they're made for. The GMC is it yeah, GMC320 has a 3 mega ohm built-in, the BR6 has a 2 mega ohm built-in. So you will have to add up the values to get to the right onode resistor, basically. One other small graphic I want to show you, just because it's interesting and a bit to do with my last video. On all these cheap Geiger counters that I tested in my last video, I just did a quick um, voltage test. I just wanted to see how much volt they really have. This is the graphic to it. Most of them are pretty decent. The pity is just that you can't set the voltage on those. Uh, except the cheap, really bad one that really had too low voltage to actually run the tube correctly. One other small thing I want to show you. Um, you know, you can do this differently. I, maybe this is a good example. I built this thing here a while ago. It's just uh, one of those um, Arduino type Geiger counter boards with uh, one of the big the SI22G tubes inside. Um, you can just make a jack cable. You can make, um, you know, exchangeable probes, you can have multiple probes. Maybe a good thing to think about is to put the anode resistor in the probe and not in the device, because they need different ones. But I mean... Yeah, works pretty well. I like this thing too. Just uh, another idea, maybe. One very last small topic um, before I really end this video. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm more into the, the Soviet-Russian types of Geiger tubes. I guess they're just more accessible in Europe, or at least they were in the past. They also were really affordable in the past. Um, prices went up a bit for sad reasons. A lot of um, sellers are located in Ukraine that sell these. I had like a, an online shop where I always bought my stuff. It was called softtube.com. They're also from Ukraine. They still exist, but they're almost sold out. You don't really find a lot of tubes anymore. anymore. <laughs> but I encourage you just to look on eBay. There are still some sellers around if you're looking for these kinds of tubes. They got a bit more expensive, but it's still reasonable in my opinion. I mean, most of these are really vintage. It's, it's pretty interesting to, to work with such old technology, but still get like really cool results. Um, but also, like, there's other tubes. Look in your country. May, may, I think Germany produced tubes. I'm sure Siemens made some. There's a lot of tubes from, from the USA. I don't know them so well, sadly. But I just you know, don't have the access so much. But there's a lot of stuff to figure out. There's a lot of different Geiger Miller tubes in this world. They all have a place in our hearts, I guess, or something like that. Okay, but before I get too stupid, um, let's end this video. Um, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you soon for another um, nerdy video. Um, yeah, have a great day. Goodbye.